Yeah, it's winter again, 2009. Sounds like a great time for another project here in cold and snowy Ohio. I'm really happy with the success of the record Better Man and the first single, Smile For Me, which had great success with MTV affiliate Logo. So much that it made the top 10 best of 2008 on the click list. I knew I had to follow up with something strong that would really engage people, and I sure didn't want to go down as a one-hit wonder. I thought my song Beautiful would be great for that and help me even gain new fans. When I first thought about the video, all I could think of was, man, I want some exotic, 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 exotic dancers. My director in Buffalo did a great job with the last video, but he wasn't able to do any of the filming due to my busy recording schedule. So he was kind of forced to edit footage that I had taken. This time, Bob Brutus Cunningham was able to work the camera and set up shots he specifically wanted. The last video featured me and my band. This one I had to go and do some recruiting. I started with the people I knew that were really behind me. I call this my family, friends, fans, and a neighbor. I recruited my entire family. My dad, Norm, my mom, Alice, sisters, Renee and Allie, my brother, Norm, and 11 nieces and nephews. Hi, everyone. I'm the half woman, half man. Yeah. my mustache. That my friend so Juanita lent me her two kids, Mario and Brittany. We even ended up recruiting Mario's dog Spaghetti and friend Steve. My friend Larry Camp, a world-renowned artist from New York City, and Pete Michael, a professional actor, writer, and stand-up comedian from Brooklyn, New York. Everybody say hi. Hi. I was told there was going to be a hair and makeup person here. Now, I only need one. <laughs> Why is that so hard to ask? Joe Cassioppo was also asked, as I'd seen him in local shows. This is a star right here. This is Joe. He's one of the stars. Anyway, the, see that thrilled look on his face? That's how he got in the video. I also sent out an email to my fans, telling them they were welcome to come for crowd shots, and if they had any hidden talents, to let me know. My friend Roger Bourne from Columbus wrote back, and I thought, I have the perfect spot for him as the ringmaster. My neighbor Jim Darby lent a hand and his camera to film this video. I think his wife Susan made him, but really, we could not have done this without Jim's help. He's a professional freelance director, so he's used to working with professionals like CNN and other big station affiliates, not beer drinking biker directors. I remember the word storyboard kept coming up. I found out what that was and realized I don't really have one. So I just typed out my shots and the story of the video I started writing back in October. My sisters have kids that are involved in a nonprofit family community theater. And I've been fortunate enough to catch a lot of local shows there. And I thought, wow, man, this would be a great place for a video. So my sister Allie suggests I talk to Kim Lauber, who helps coordinate the theater and dance studio, where she teaches kids of all ages to dance. Well, she loved the idea. So did Fred McWhorter, theater owner. So before I knew it, the location was all set. Now I realized, man, I'm going to need a lot of props and costumes. So I started making the props because I basically had a budget of zero. Here we have one of our stars. Iron You're the call girl? I'm the call girl today. Ironing his own shirt. Makeup. And now, wardrobe. Sacrifices, my man. It's a good thing this is a non-union gig. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I really prefer to iron. Luckily, my house has a big basement because I have PVC pipe, spray paint, duct tape, fabric, stapler guns, styrofoam soccer balls, banjos, dog biscuits, peanut butter, curtain rods, and clown wigs all over my basement. Matt Clary, I think, brought the very best prop of all. It was a microphone that belonged to our friend Josh McTarian, a musician and policeman who lost his life in the line of duty. Kim started with the costumes, and she came up with some great ones for the three groups of dancers I had. A lot of the actors brought their own costumes or made them, which was a huge help to me. I basically had a story centered around three stars, one of which was my dad, Norm. 
And of course, my band, including producer and guitarist Matt Cleary, bass player Mark Matthews, and drummer Adam Mercer. I've started to realize how much hard work was going on already. The first time I saw the dancers, I was blown away, and they had only just learned the routine an hour earlier. Even the youngest dancers learned everything in one rehearsal, so I was really getting excited. I wanted to shoot this thing in two days, especially if Bob was driving in the dead of winter from Buffalo, New York to Akron, Ohio. I also knew I didn't want to waste anybody's time. My neighbor, Jim Darby, had come over and looked at my notes the Wednesday before filming so he could think about his approach on capturing everything on film. Jim suggested I break up the two-day sessions. Saturday was going to be the big narrative day, the day we'd capture the shots to tell the story going on in the video. Sunday we'd shoot the band, dancers, and the big crowd scenes. My crew was phenomenal. Ricky Rock God Thompson and Doug Coolidge McHenry took care of lights, stage, and were basically my production managers. They even lent their talent to running the camera once in a while. My brother, Jeff Reel, helped with makeup. He was a stagehand and uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> even an actor. His juggling wasn't very good. We had a great time making this video. It was fun, and we came up with some crazy and hilarious things. Yes, like those costumes I got for the band. I thought they were going to love them, so I emailed them immediately. Well, two days later, I still hadn't heard from anybody. I got a little nervous. But they were good sports about it, and when they got the concept of the video, they thought those shirts rocked. I heard they even wore those shirts out later that night to the local bar in Akron called Annabelle's. The shoot days were really long, so the parents of the kids involved and my sisters and friend Juanita brought in a lot of food, which was really awesome. We did a lot of takes on Sunday, and I thought my band and dancers really stole the show. I can say my dancers were award-winning, and earlier in the day, they received a first place prize at a competition. So when they got to the shoot, they were really very excited and energetic, and it showed immediately. I'm proud of the hard work and dedication by my family, my band, the choreographers, dancers, the family theater community, and the outstanding job the actors did to make this video come to life. Sunday was hard. I was trying to direct from stage, but the problem was I really couldn't see enough of what was going on, and I'm not really a director. So luckily, I had lots of theater moms there. I thought soccer moms were outrageous. Oh no, these ladies are remarkable and they never miss a thing. They ended up being a huge help to me. If I was ever wondering if the dance take was a good one, all I had to do was look at Kim and the theater moms. After a while, they got so comfortable with me, they would just come up to me behind the camera and say, yeah, that was good, or eh, I've seen them do that a lot better. It was hilarious to me. I'm trying to yell out direction, and they're screaming at their kids and me and my band to smile and have fun. The hard work did pay off, and I know we're going to have an awesome looking video. Check me out on Logo, MTV, YouTube, or any other video affiliates. I'm going to work this video to try to get as much airplay as I can. The song, Beautiful, is off my record, Better Man, which is available at my website, ElijahBlack.com, CD Baby, and iTunes for downloads. All right, theater moms. A five, six, seven, eight. Uh -huh.